Hey guys, Kim here and you are tuned into my channel, Kim E, the Diabetes NP, and today we are going to talk about sulfonylureas and what you need to know when managing your patients on those medications. This drug class includes glipizide, glyburide, and glimepiride. So if you want to learn a little bit more about these medicines, get a little bit of a refresher, stay tuned. We're going to get into it. All right, sulfonylureas. Let's do a little overview of the drug class. In a nutshell, the way that this medication class works is that it stimulates the pancreas to secrete more insulin. Now, how does it do this, Kim? Okay, I'll tell you how it does it. Now, hopefully I can do this in a way that doesn't confuse you and, uh, and in the process doesn't confuse me, but just in case, I'm going to link in the description box a couple of videos that are animated and you can watch them and hopefully that'll help you if I do confuse you, but I apologize if I do. Now, how sulfonylureas do this? So it basically closes the potassium channel on the cell. Now, we know that potassium is positively charged and if potassium is not getting out of the cell, then that leaves the inside of the cell positively charged. Now, because it's not rushing out, cell is positive internally and that causes depolarization to happen. That whole cascade system that happens then causes the calcium channel to open up Calcium then outside of the cell runs into the cell. It then stimulates the insulin cells that are inside of those beta cells to release more insulin into the system. And in a nutshell, that's how the sulfonylureas work. Now again, hopefully that made sense to you. I tried to not get too detailed because again, this video, this platform is not like a lecture okay but if you need a little bit more um, information a little bit more detail again I'm going to link those videos in the description box and you can go look at the, look at those on your own time one of the things that you do need to keep in mind because by those calcium molecules rushing into the cell stimulating those insulin cells it pushes insulin out into the system so keep that in mind and that seems pretty simple, doesn't it? Okay. Something else to keep in mind, sulfonylureas are two generations. We have the first generation and we also have the second generation. We are probably more familiar with the second generation of medications in the sulfonylureas and that would be your glipizide, your glyburide, and your glimepiride. At one point in time, I was looking at some literature that said that glimepiride was a part of a third generation, but the more recent research that I have seen, they only have two generations in this drug class. Now, you may ask yourself, okay, so what are the first generation sulfonylureas? Well, you tend, they are the first ones, they're the older ones, clearly, the first generation. And though they were effective when they came out, I believe in the 40s, they have a very high side effect index. And um, if you are familiar with sulfonylureas, you already know that the class in itself comes with a high side effect index, but that first gen generation of medications has a high, even higher index, okay? So you're not going to really see those medicines in practice every once in a while I'll see um, PCPs prescribe them but not often what I typically see is glimepiride I see a lot of that and I see the gl glyburide and the glipizide something to keep in mind um, because sulfonylureas uh, stimulate the pancreas to release more insulin that person needs to still be able to produce insulin so think about it if a person is not able to produce insulin, there it does this drug class no good to stimulate a pancreas that can't put out insulin. So because of that, if the person does not have endogenous insulin, this medication is not going to be effective. And also because of that, this drug class is contraindicated in anyone who has type 1. This is specifically for type 2 because the idea is that in a type 2 diabetic, they still have circulating in, uh, insulin. They still have endogenous insulin. 
insulin. Now, um, who is this medication ideal for? So I'm gonna be honest with you, out of the 11, 12 drug classes um, that we have in diabetes, um, a strong 11 classes, there are some other medicines that could be treat, treating diabetes, but 11 classes of drug, uh, drug classes. This class is probably the one that you'll see the most, but it's not the most effective. And the reason why you'll see it the most is because it's affordable. It's not the best out of the drug classes. It's not. Um, it is not first line. You know, a few years back, um, the ADA and the AACE, uh, back, I think back in 2016, said that you could use this as monotherapy, but first line therapy is metformin. We know. Um, it is a good nod to use this medicine with metformin. It's, go it's good as a, a dual therapy, but as far as monotherapy, the person that you would use this in would be a person who does not have any cholesterol issues like dyslipidemia and a person who is not overweight. Now let's be honest y'all, how many of our patients are probably going to have that type of stipulation? Not many, okay? If a person has type 2 diabetes, they probably have high blood pressure and cholesterol and they probably are obese not even overweight, they are like obese or morbidly obese. And I, I'm not trying to say that there aren't people out there, but the likelihood that you would be able to choose this medicine and want to start this medicine as a monotherapy is probably going to be very slim. So you'll see this typically as a medicine that you'll uh, use with metformin. And of course, I'll be honest with you, again, it's an affordable medicine. Of course, a lot of the, the all the insurances cover this. It's free. It's on $4 list at pharmacies if it's not. And um, as far as our Medicare, Medicaid population, this drug is the drug that is covered for them. And so you will see that, but I wanted to make sure that I came on and talked about sulfonylureas because we are going to see this medicine. We're probably going to use this medicine just as much as we use metformin, not because it's the best medicine out there, but more so because it's affordable and it's accessible, okay? All right, side effects. So. This is one of those drug classes that you do need to be very mindful of, just like any class, I guess. We have to be mindful of side effects and precautions and contraindications of all drug classes. But this one has a very, very common side effect that you have to really monitor, not only also for your practice, but also educate your patients on, okay? And that's hypoglycemia. Now, it is going to cause hypoglycemia like it's it's just that's what it does okay and you have to think about it why it is liter its literal mechanism of action is stimulating the pancreas to release more insulin okay so you're going to have a high volume of a higher volume of insulin circulating so of course quite naturally you're going to have blood sugar that's going to drop and you need to educate yourself but also your patients to be able to monitor and manage that okay so that's your number one side effect but something else that you also need to be mindful of to educate your patients on is this this medication causes weight gain, okay? And the reason being is because if you know anything about insulin, insulin is known to cause weight gain. So if we are increasing the secretion of insulin, more insulin secretion is going on, then it's going to cause weight gain. Um, something else that you also need to be mindful of with this patient is that this drug class is highly dependent on renal function. And over time, as we know, as we age, our renal function decreases. And so you have to be mindful not only of renal but liver function as well, the breaking down of the medication and the filtering, the eliminating of this medication. Because as we age, 
we don't want this drug class to accumulate because again it causes hypoglycemia so if you have it in your system you're going to drop that blood sugar and it's going to drop and you're going to have hypoglycemia so it's very important that you are monitoring your patient's renal function and their liver function so we can make sure that this medicine is going through the system as it should now something else that i'm not quite sure that a lot of people are aware of and it makes sense if you think about it okay over time the effectiveness of this drug class is going to decrease okay now you may say well that's pretty much all drugs you know our body is a smart machine and it learns these medicines and after a while you do have to switch up okay yeah that's right <laughs> that is right people but think about it like this this drug class is stimulating that pancreas like pushing that pancreas push out insulin push out insulin after a while that pancreas is overworked and it poops out okay and this is something that you need to keep in mind because this drug class is not protective of the pancreas so it's a medicine that if you get a patient that maybe it's a new patient to you but they've been a diabetic for a while and they've been on this medicine for a long time or maybe you have a patient that has been on this medicine for a long time consider changing them off of it because after a while no matter how good this medicine may do for your patient after a while it's not going to be effective anymore and okay guys i think that's all our side effects okay so one thing that i want to reiterate okay now this is going to be your pop which is your pearl of practice for the providers and this is also going to be your pal which is your pearl of wisdom for your patients hypoglycemia if you don't get anything else out of this video, when you think of sulfonylureas, think of hypoglycemia, okay? Um, I've already talked about why, and again, I'm going to also link some um, resources in the description box for you to look at so you can get a better understanding of that. But it is imperative that you are watching for this, guys, that your patients are watching for this, and that we are able to prevent it, we are able to treat it, and we are able to manage it, okay? They need to be able to do this at home and you also need to be able to um, recognize this um, in your practice as well. Okay guys, I hope this was helpful for you all. As you have probably noticed that I'm working through the drug classes because I'm trying to go through the treatment algorithm. And if you are looking at the treatment algorithm, let it be the ADA or the AACE, you might notice that the sulfonylurea drug class is not like your second line. And the reason why is because of the obvious reasons that I have shared but the reason why I wanted to cover this after metformin is because though it's maybe not the best drug class it's the it's one of the most common drug class I see this medicine right after I see metformin and quite honestly if a patient cannot tolerate metformin they're going to be probably most likely on this medicine all because it's cheap let's just keep it honest let's keep it real okay and so i wanted to cover this drug class after metformin not because i'm saying that it's the next in line but it may be next in line because it is accessible for your patients so again you've been sitting here with your host kim and you've been tuned in to Kim E, the Diabetes MP. If you don't mind, if this content is something that you find value in, go ahead and subscribe over here. There's a little button here. If you're watching on a desktop, if you're watching on your phone, go ahead and click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss an upload. I'm gonna continue going this route going through the drug classes, trying to pull out the things that you need to know, guys. So if this is something that you like, you want to make sure that you're subscribed. Again, thank you for tuning in, and I'll catch you later. Bye.